Hi, welcome to episode four, Curiosity is Key. If you're joining me for the first time, welcome and thank you. If you listened last week to Just Start, I hope that gave you some things to think about and getting started in whatever that project is in your life that you've been putting off. But what if you don't have a project that's kind of burning a hole in your brain? What if you're still kind of seeking um, or just trying to figure out how to find that type of project, that type of things that will, thing will catch your interest enough to create something out of it, create a project, create a thing to do? Well, that's why I think curiosity is key. So let's talk about that. First, it creates a sense of mindfulness in your everyday activities. When you go into anything with an attitude of curiosity, you're much more aware of what's going on. You're paying attention. You're noticing all the things, big and small, some that you've never noticed before. You're engaging more of your senses. You're looking at things from a different angle. And it, it truly gets you more in the moment when you're curious. It's hard to think about your grocery list or your um, late projects at work when you're really being curious about what's going on right at the moment. Second, it flexes your creative muscle. When you're approaching something with a curious mindset, you start to think differently. Um, in those that mindfulness and in that awareness, your brain starts taking it further and like I said, that creative muscle starts to, to move, get into motion and gets flexed. So how does it do that? How, how do you become more curious in your everyday life? First and foremost is to just be interested in whatever you're doing um, or whatever you're reading or seeking out. You never know what can spark curiosity. Something you see on social media, uh, something you read in a newspaper article, I mean, who has ever read something and then you end up Googling four or five things and you may not even finish what it is you were reading to begin with? That's curiosity. You've taken an interest in something and you want to know more. So that interest is the first step. The second to me is embracing your inner three-year-old. And if you've ever been the parent of a three-year-old or a teacher, you know what their favorite word is. Why? Why this? Why that? Why am I supposed to do this? Why are you telling me this? Why do I have to eat this? Why do I have to go here? Why do I have to put my shoes on? Why? So embrace that. Embrace that inner three-year-old. Embrace your why. Embrace asking why of everything, of anything. Um, and it doesn't even have to be asking a person. Ask yourself why. Look into it. I love knowing the why of things and, and from everything. Baking and cooking. Baking is very scientific. When you start studying the why of baking, why not to stir something too hard? Um, it's fascinating. I also find that why helps me even beyond creativity, to be honest. Like if a doctor wants me to take something, why? Uh, my favorite dentist explained why flossing is so good for your teeth. Not just is good for your teeth, but the why behind it. And I am much more likely to embrace something or do something, follow through with something. When someone's explained the why to me, I wanna know why I'm doing this. Why is this important? Your creative muscle is the same way. When you understand or you start looking for the why, you get more engaged, you get more involved, you have more follow through. You're much more likely to become involved with something when you know the why of it. So act like a three-year-old, ask why. And to go hand in hand with that, you've got to be open-minded. You've got to be open-minded to the information you find. You've got to be open-minded about where you look for information, where you go for information, who you talk to for information. And don't always just dismiss what you find out based on some sort of bias or anything or where it comes from, be open-minded and go back to that questioning. Look into it. If you find something and it kind of, you know, makes you hesitate, ask yourself why. Ask why am I shutting this down? Am I shutting down this idea? Is it, do I think it's too hard? Do I think it's 
takes up too much time. Do I think, oh, there's never in a million years I could do this. Be open-minded about what you're looking at and your curiosity. Go a little bit further than is comfortable. Find a way to be more curious is to just discover. Um, be on the lookout for new. And that's almost beyond having an interest. An interest is when you're in something and you engage and have more curiosity. Purposely go out to discover new things. However you do that, whatever your favorite way to learn or, or find something new. I love bookstores or libraries, either one. Um, browse an aisle you haven't really looked at. One of my favorite places, again, is a library and they usually have a couple of shelves of new books. And I'll browse the entire thing, even sections that aren't normally of things of interest to me, just to see is there something that, you know, a book that on a subject that I never thought would be interesting, but it looks interesting. So try and go discover things on purpose to flex that curiosity muscle. So curiosity is essential. It's important for creativity. Um, you feel like, okay, I can do this. I can be more curious. I can question. I can be open-minded and have an interest in things. I can go out and discover. Why would I do this? What, what's, what's in it for me? The benefits of curiosity are plentiful. One, it increases your knowledge. As you're curious about things and you start to seek, you can't help but learn. Even if it's something that you're not gonna follow through with or turn it into a project or turn it into a paper or whatever, just the fact that you took an extra step to look into something and to learn something increases that knowledge base. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I love Google. I am constantly on, like I said before, reading something and I've gotta Google two or three things that I've seen in it in the article or something I saw on social media or something. I've got to go explore a little bit more and find out just that little speck of information about it. And that may be as far as it goes. Or maybe I'll bookmark it, or maybe, <laughs> tell you the truth, a lot of times it prompts books for me to read. Um, and I'll end up seeing if I can get it at the library or just throwing it on my Goodreads list. So going that little extra step increases your knowledge base. Even if it's just that tiny step of looking it up on the internet or or fully reading an article. Just going, just having that little spark of curiosity increases your knowledge base when you push through to just find out one more thing about it. Embracing your curiosity stretches your boundaries. It pushes you to look into things that maybe you wouldn't normally think of. When something, when someone says something or you read something and you're like, what? It might be a subject that just isn't something that you feel comfortable with or have ever even thought about or looked at before. And taking, leaning into the curiosity, questioning it, going into it will stretch your boundaries on life just a little bit. Maybe it's on religion or your math skills or really anything. Being curious stretches your boundaries and pushes you out of your comfort zone, even just a little, and it helps. Curiosity strengthens your connections. Often when you have that curious spark and you're going and looking for more, a lot of times that means asking the person who's talking why or reaching out to someone you know who's an expert on the subject or reaching out to someone who you know knows more than you and can provide you information on it. I have a good friend of mine. She is a very creative person in general, but she's also a spreadsheet queen. I mean, she an absolute spreadsheet queen. So even though I've got a decent knowledge, my husband has a really good knowledge, when it's something really difficult, I reach out to her and even though we're already friends, that strengthens our friendship. People love to help. People love to teach. People want to give. And when you reach out to someone, ask them for help, ask them for information, just ask them to talk about what they do because you're curious, it strengthens that connection between you and that person. So that is one of my favorite things about curiosity is knowing that me being curious about something makes someone else feel good about sharing and helping 
and then that creates strength and bond between us. And being curious has the potential to strengthen your sense of purpose. When you ask why something is happening this way, it isn't right, or you feel like there's some sort of injustice, and you start looking into things, you have an interest, you follow that interest, you start asking why is it this way, that curiosity can lead you into something that you feel very passionate about can lead you into something that you not only just want to scratch the surface of exploring, but you really want to dedicate a good portion of your time, your abilities, your resources. It can really spark something that is significant to you and to your life and give you purpose. In fact, I dare say, I don't think you can find your purpose in life without being curious. Um, my husband is fairly close to retirement and he has focused on retirement for years and saving for retirement. And now that he's close and you know, you've got all the finan we have financial questions and everything, and believe me, there's spreadsheets involved in that with Mr. Spreadsheet. But he's at a point now that he's like, okay, I've been working my whole life. What, what next? What's gonna be after retirement? And so he's having to flex his curiosity muscle in creativity and trying to figure out what's his purpose gonna be after work. Um, and really, if, he's, if he wasn't curious and looking and seeking and asking why and looking into different things and actually you know, trying new things from some programming and some diff you know, different types of things, there's no way he'd find purpose. Uh, how many dads or grandfathers or mothers or grandmothers, whatever, that you know retired from a good portion of their life and then ended up in front of the on the couch in front of the TV because they didn't like that spark of curiosity get out there flex those muscles creativity muscles and find a new sense of purpose so that's kind of the ultimate goal of curiosity is hitting a point where you're finding some purpose but again I don't think you can find that purpose without the curiosity so in some of my research for this episode, one name kept coming up over and over, and it was Dr. Todd Cashton. He's a professor of psychology with, at George Mason University. He's written several books and done a number of talks on curiosity. A lot of it focus on, focuses on curiosity and like the workplace and business place. It's very interesting, and I'll put a long, link to his website in the show notes, but if you're really interested in this and especially maybe in the aspect of how can curiosity help you in your work in your place of work i encourage you to go listen to some of his talks or take a look at his website and see what he has to say it's a little different from how i'm presenting it here but it's very interesting as well so this week i encourage you to be curious have, have an interest in something question it be open-minded and be ready to discover and see if it changes kind of the way you're looking at some of your life around you. So go be creative and feed your soul.